the death of email has, uh, has been, um, you know, sounded, should we say, from all sorts of quarters in the past. And, and yet here we are today seeing the ever dizzy, <laughs> the dizzy numbers increasing in front of our very eyes. So it's quite hard to think about um, life before and after email, isn't it? I mean, Gmail was originally set up in 2004, um, ironically on the 1st of April, but um, less of a joke given where we've seen its volumes uh, move to in the subsequent 19 years. Um, you know, th there is no other medium in the world that uh, includes such high volumes of communication than email. Even if you look at the messaging apps that exist out there, you know, email is by far the preferred communication medium. Uh, and it's predicted to not just remain at that level, but to increase. COVID saw its own increases during a period when we were having to deal with distance um, interactions and and that's persisted uh, to, 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 to a large degree in, since COVID. So the 320, 330 actually billion email that is sent and received every day is actually forecast to increase quite significantly in the coming in the coming years. Um, and it is very hard, as I say, to imagine a life without it, um, particularly because it lives now on our desktop next to everything else that we interact with on a daily basis. And as I said before, can be viewed as a bit of a Marmite subject. It's very easy to love and hate it within the same moment in that but but I'm afraid it's not going anywhere and our customers are right, retain their email addresses, as I say, longer than potentially other forms of communication, including the, their postal addresses. So uh, I, I think you can see a long life uh, for email um, as it's predicted by pretty well everyone in the market. So email was originally introduced, um, almost invented and used by the education and, you know, defence sectors. Uh, you know, it wasn't ever really intended to be anything except for publicly sharing information. Initially, I say publicly, initially between institutions and then latterly as a medium to share openly information. Um, and that that motive has sort of persisted, I'm afraid. So whilst it's it's, it's immediacy, it's convenience, it's extraordinary, it's the risks associated with it in its native form remain. Um, you know, it was invented, as I say, for sharing, not protecting. Um, so I guess I guess that's the reason that solutions like ours have been created, um, to try and shore up some of those, those original problems, or I guess the change in the way the internet, uh, how it's evolved, how people now want to use it, but every part, all their parts of their life, not just their their information gathering and maybe looking up Wikipedia as it, you know, uh, one of the earlier ones, or surfing the web through one of the browsers. It, it's it's about banking. It's about interacting with your goods and service providers. It's about taking advice. It's about everything that's to do with your personal life. So security, therefore, suddenly comes very high on the uh, on the agenda. Uh, and hence the reason Maillock exists. The death of email has, uh, has been, um, you know, sounded, should we say, from all sorts of quarters in the past. And, and yet here we are today seeing the ever dizzy, <laughs> the dizzy numbers increasing in front of our very eyes. It's an interesting conversation. I remember having this one with one of my sons, a well, as he's headed into university, when he said, well, email you know I don't, why are you trying to solve that problem dad when he arrived the first thing he got issued with apart from his kit bag and on the technology side was an email address and ever since then an email address either personal or work has persisted in his life um and that's the world we live in um and i can't see it changing you know you've got to change the habits of not only all of the uk adults but all of the companies that operate within the uk uh, and beyond the global domain um, emails going nowhere other than increased usage and, and all the problems that go with it, I'm afraid. I think email has become more synonymous with interactions in the business world or with consumers that are interacting with businesses. 
And that's probably likely because the messaging apps that we might use for those short snippets and conversations all within perhaps groups of us, um, you know, they fit conversationally more with something more fluid like a messaging app. A a email, however, still has to fill that void um, given that businesses are compelled to control their messaging and and oversight from a security perspective to ensure their customers are uh, are being interacted with in a way that is, you know, in sync with the regulatory obligations and their record keeping obligations and, and so on and so forth. And that's not easy to do when you've got a plethora of messaging apps. That doesn't displace, by the way, the fact that, you know, those messaging apps have a place in our personal lives. But when interacting with our goods and services providers uh, and advice, um, it feels like email still um, tips the scale quite significantly in its uh, in its own favour. So an interesting observation that's been made um, in, in, indeed today was, so do we give you a new email address? No, we don't. I mean, it was really important that people people persist their email addresses like their mobile phone numbers. They become part of our, you know, they're, they're really important to us to stay in contact, aren't they? So when we when we were creating the solution, it was important for us to be able to wrap around existing email addresses, email infrastructure, email systems, uh, and not present a point of friction uh, for, for any of that. So so we we don't replace your email address or your email system. We interact with the existing capabilities and your existing addresses, um, but we provide a layer of security that's absent from that system in its sort of native form. Email fundamentally hasn't changed a huge amount since it was first introduced so many years ago. What has changed is that it's feasible now because of the systems that we employ to read and send email, to interact with that infrastructure in a way that helps us overlay other functionality. Mailock is a, a very typical example of that. And indeed, you'll see in the coming months that the capability is being extended to accommodate other things like large file transfer uh, and, and wrapping even more robust authentication methods in so that you can be absolutely sure that the only party that can read the content and the, of the email is, is, is an identified individual, a full ID and V type capability. So my suspicion is that email in itself is going to be a difficult medium to change fundamentally itself, but you'll see technologies, a bit like Mailock, that will wrap around that infrastructure to enhance enhance the user experience and overlay functionality that's absent from it in its native form. So artificial intelligence, the hot topic at the moment, um, which, which is gaining lots of attention, definitely has a place in the context of email and communication. Um, there are definitely evolutions of the systems that will help intelligently try and provide you with the, with, uh, the means of monitoring your outbound communications and ensuring that perhaps you're not misdirecting an email uh, to the wrong party because you've never spoken to them about a topic that's covered within the body text of an email. That's absolutely out of possible and uh, there are systems out there in the fact that you can buy that will do that today. They do require us a high degree of trust, I guess, because they're fundamentally looking at all your data. And that's something we've deliberately architected out of our solution um, so that we can't see the content of email. Nonetheless, it's it, it may well be something that we'll, we'll try and wrap into the systems. What, but interestingly, what has also come up on the radar recently is, is that given that our system is trying to provide a low friction read process, even within an enterprise, what would be a really nice to have would be to have some artificial intelligence overlooking the inbound email to start to be able to put topics into certain pigeonholes for the right party to deal with them. So I can see how AI will increasingly play a part of how this very high volume of medium, because it's used so prolifically, uh, can be made as efficient as possible in terms of that communication exchange uh, and to speed up the processes that sit around the usage of email.